What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dread Labs and today I'm going to show you how to make five race graphics like these in Adobe Illustrator. Dread Labs. Right, so this video series is a sequel to one that I did before on the channel, I think about six months ago. You can check it out in the link in the description. Today, I'm going to show you a few more techniques on how to create cool racing graphics inspired by some racing brands, gasoline brands, stickers, motocross emblems, anything in that kind of sector. So yeah, let's just get into it. Okay, first I'm going to make five more artboards by pressing the artboard tool, which is by sh pressing shift O on your keyboard. And this will bring up this menu and I'll just click plus five times. And if we go to the artboard section here, which you can find under window artboards, I'm going to click this little button here, which says rearrange all artboards. And I'm going to make sure that I have five columns, which results in five, a row of artboards underneath the ones that I've made before. All right. So the first one is basically like a quick, quick one uh, using the offset path method. For this logo, I'm using the font truck. So just find that. Let's scale it up a bit. And we're immediately going to create outlines from these. And what I like to do with text like this is just ungroup it and see if I can rearrange it in a way that makes it a little bit more, that gives it a little bit more unity, I guess. And what I like about this is that the vertical uh, lines of the letter D and the L really match up well together. It's nice to have it like aligned in here. Uh, just make sure I was experimenting before. If you do it like this, it's, it looks like there, it says LD or something. So yeah, what I would like to do is just do it like this. And the goal here is to have almost the same amount of space around here, like the white space. And I think something like this should do. Uh, we don't really need to bother about this part, I think. So what I want to do now is I want to click the L. Just to be clear, let's just put all of this in a new layer so we can close this one up. Now it's a bit more clear on what I'm working on in the layer menu here. So I'm going to select the L and I'm going to go to Object, Path, Offset Path. And I'm going to make the offset just enough to cover the white, the, the white like negative space. And I think 33 pixels in this case is the way to go. And I'm just going to make it green so we can actually see what we just did here. So if you don't know, the offset path basically makes a stroke around your object, but it does it a little bit more accurately. And I like to work with only fill objects. So as you can see, so as you can see now, there's still like an object here instead of like a stroke, which is ideal. Uh, so we're going to use this green outline to punch out these parts of the D. And the way we're going to do that, so we're going to select the green one here and the D. I'm going to bring up the Shape Builder tool. If we hold Alt or Option on our keyboard and we drag around here, we basically already cut everything out. But we want to do something first. We want to have, we want to make sure that this part won't be cut out. And that's a little bit tricky. So what we want to do before we actually use the Shape Builder tool is go to our Pathfinder, which you can find under Window Pathfinder. And I'm going to click this one, the Divide button. And this will make it so that all of the parts here are separate pieces. And I already kind of see what we've done here. So let me just uh, undo my action here. And I want to grab both of the L's and I want to place just one pixel over to the left. And if we go into line view here, you can see that it didn't really overlap before, I think. So what we can do is just make sure that this is actually properly aligned. Like this. Now, if we click on divide here, we should be able to use the Pathfinder tool. We can merge this two together and we can hold all our option and remove everything else here, which results in a cutout D. And let's just make that black again. All right, so now we basically have the shape here and now we now we want to go and do some outlines. So what I like to do here is, as you can see, um, this is all not merged. So what we can do is we go to Pathfinder and click the Unite button. And then I'm going to click Command or Control 8 on my keyboard. And this will make it into a compound path. You can also do this by going to Object, Compound Path, Make. And this basically makes it easier for me to work with the offset paths. All right, so we're going to go to object path, offset path again, and we can leave the 33 in here. But what this does, we can now, we now have one path instead of like multiple paths uh, as the outline here. So I want to just make this white and then do it another time. Uh, I actually have offset path linked to a custom shortcut, command five, as you can see. So if I 
immediately bring up the offset path menu here is because I'm pressing command five. And now we can make this black again. And now we can grab the middle one and we can make it green or whatever color you like, of course. All right, now we can just group this, align it to the middle and scale it down a little bit. And that's shape one. All right, onto shape two. So the first thing that I wanna do is type DLR. And the font that we're gonna use this time is Adriana, extended extra bold. And I'm gonna create outli outlines immediately, align it to the middle here. What we're gonna use now is the bulge function. So we're gonna go to effect, warp, bulge. And we only need like a 10% bulge, I think. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a rectangle. Let's just make an outline so we can clearly see what we're doing here. And circle. And we need the circle to be just a little bit smaller than the rectangle. And what we want to do now is we also want to bulge this rectangle. So we're going to go again to Effect, Warp, Bulge. And again, a 10% is just fine. And what we can do now is, as you can see, if we go to the line view here, these bulges aren't actually applied to our shapes. So what we can do about that is we're going to select our rectangle here and go to Object, Expand Appearance. I'm gonna do the same thing with our text here. Go to Object, Expand Appearance. And now if we go into the line view, you see that, it, that it's actually properly applied. All right, so I wanna go and grab a copy of the circle and the rectangle here. So I'm gonna go press Command C, and then I'm gonna press Command F, which will paste this in place. Now I have a separate like rectangle and cir uh, circle on the same place basically, and I wanna unite these. So if we fill this up, this is what we are left with. And we're gonna use this to basically create an outline. So again, we're gonna go press Command-5, which is go Object Path, Offset Path. Gonna make an offset of like 10 pixels maybe. A little bit more, like 15, I think. We can delete the first one. We can bring this all the way to the back so we can actually see what we have here. And I wanna remove the fill and add some stroke here, like 10 points. and. If we go to the stroke menu, we can align the stroke to the outside here. Okay, what I wanna do now is I wanna grab the circle, the original one, and I wanna fill it with orange. And I'm gonna go just bring it to the back here. And now what I wanna do is use this rectangle to punch out the circle. And this will leave us with the second one. And as you can see, this one's a little bit more bulged, uh, so I probably used a bulge effect of more than 10% here. It's all up to you to experiment with this. All right, so the next one is the flags. And what we're gonna use for the flags is let's just go and press D on the keyboard so we are back at black, uh, a white foreground color and a black stroke color. And under the line segment tool, we're gonna grab the rectangular grid tool. If we draw this out while holding shift, uh, we're gonna make sure that we have a lot of squares here. So the way you can change these is with the arrow keys on your keyboard. So let's just go with three, four, five, five is fine. And before we're gonna do anything with this, uh, click K on your keyboard, which will bring up the live paint bucket. Change your fill color to black and click here. And it should say click to make a live paint group. And now we can just paint in the blocks. And what we can do now is just grab this, duplicate it. And of course you don't wanna duplicate it in this way, but you want it to overlap so so that the blocks will still match up. Okay, with the whole flex selected, go to Object, Expand, and just click OK. And with both of these selected, press Command G so we can group this, align it to the middle, and we're gonna go to Effect, Warp, Flag. And let's create a bend of 20%, and I wanna have the horizontal button a bit shifted to the left here, like this. All right, this should be fine. Okay, now we're gonna make the flagpole go like this, just a regular rectangle and ellipse on top. I'm gonna unite these. And basically what we're gonna do again is grab an offset path, but then we wanna make it smaller. So minus four is actually okay, I think. And we're gonna just fill it with black. And I'm gonna make a line it to the left here. And then at the, at the bottom here, we wanna align these bottom points to the bottom. Okay, lastly, I wanna uh, expand the appearance of the flag here. And if we ungroup this twice, we should be able to have these separate grids here. 
as well as the one from the flagpole and now we can up the stroke to for example three or four maybe let's go with three to make the outline just a little bit more thick all right so now if we group this and we go to our preferences here in general we can mark on scale stroke and effects and if we scale this down now we can now place this wherever we want without affecting the stroke width and we want to make sure that it's actually less than half so like this now we're going to check this off again and i'm going to draw a simple line with my pen tool here align it to the middle and with the flex selected click o on your keyboard to bring up the reflect tool click once on the first anchor point and hold all option while clicking on the second one and this will make a mirrored flag all right on to the fourth one this is kind of like a Yu-Gi-Oh ish looking logo the font that i used for this was aviano flair All right, for, so with Dread selected, we can just create outlines of these. If we go to Effect, Warp, Arc, Upper, we can actually bend this the other way around. And let's just make sure that the horizontal one is set to zero again. If we bend it minus 10% here, we're gonna do the same thing here. And we're not going to Arc Upper, but we're gonna go to Arc Lower. And you probably already know that warping text might result in some weird results so what i like to do here is basically scale these up vertically a little bit so that the bend will actually be applied without like flattening the text i guess so yeah this should be fine i'm gonna go to object expand appearance again i'm gonna merge them and again i'm gonna go to object compound path make and once more we're gonna make this the color white i'm gonna go to object Path, offset path, I'm gonna outline it five pixels, I think, make it black. Then I'm gonna repeat that again, but then we're gonna go and make it a little bit bigger, like 30 pixels. And depending on what you like here, um, I'm actually gonna lose the miter limit here. I'm gonna set it to two, and we can just make this red. All right, and if you're not satisfied with these edges, we can just delete these ones with the drive selection tool. And things like these, I would advise you to solve them with the pen tool. I didn't really have time for, to do it here. <laughs> so uh, yeah, if you want to, you can just do it yourself. All right, the last one. First, before we're gonna add our text, let's create two rectangles with the full width and the half 50% of the height. Color this a little bit of a teal. And the bottom one, we're gonna go and color red. And we're gonna add one more and we're gonna make that 10 pixels high, I think. And um, let's just call it a white. All right, so now we're gonna grab our text, which is Montserrat. You can find this on Google Fonts. And let's create some outlines again. And we're gonna press E on our keyboard, which will bring up the free transform tool. And if we grab the middle, and if we grab the top middle anchor point here, you'll see this icon and we can skew it a little bit however we like. I think this should be fine. And again, let's go to object, compound path, make, and now I have a compound path of our text. So we're gonna grab our text, press command C, command F, which will bring up a copy. All right, so with our text selected and our blue rectangle selected, click the intersect button on your pathfinder menu. And let's just color this teal again. I'm gonna do the same here. So grab the black text here, grab the bottom red rectangle here, Click the intersect button on your pathfinder and we'll make this red again. And as you probably still haven't forgotten, we still have our white rectangle here. So we're gonna bring that to the front. Press command C, command F, so we have two rectangles now. Okay, and so before we're gonna do anything with the pathfinder, let me just show you why I'm making these into compound paths. So this, as you can see here, is a group. Let me just grab one of these rectangles and punch the front out. And this will only punch out the front of the top object in the group here. And I want to do it on the full text. So I'm just going to grab the text here, make it into a compound path by pressing command or control eight, grab the rectangle, punch it out. And now we have it just the way we want it. Same here, make it a compound path, select the rectangle and punch it out. All right, now for the last time, and now for the last time, let's make some offset paths. So the way I want to do this is let's just copy, let's just copy both of these Press Command F and unite them. Let's make a compound path once more. So now we have a 
red compound path of our text here. And let's do the offset path, minor limit to four. And I think we should go with, let's go with 15 pixels and do it once more black. And we can just re we can just delete the compound path one here, bring these two to the back. And we can give these ones a stroke, align it to the outside. And voila. All right, guys, there you have it. Five racing logos done in Adobe Illustrator. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, so if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments or join us on Discord. And I want to take a moment in this video to thank all of my patrons. Because of my patrons, I'm actually able to make these tutorials for you guys. The more patrons means more tutorials, more videos, more Dreadlabs content for you guys. So if you don't know, if you become a patron, you'll get access to all of the project files of my tutorials, including this one. You'll get a 15% discount in the Dreadlabs web store as well as a cool Discord rule. So if you want to become a patron, there's a link in the description. And I want to thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.